I'm Tom Aikens, chef and restaurateur. So I'm here in the Imperial College and the reason I'm in here, as you can see, it's almost like a science lab and kitchen because I've done a project in association uh, with Imperial College and uh, also with Electrolux. Peter Torak, who's a physics teacher here at the Imperial College, he used to come and dine pretty often at uh, Tom Aiken's restaurant and over the time, you know, we sort of chatted and became friends and... Food is basically a passion of mine uh, and that is how I got involved in it. Uh, and there's a surprisingly lot of physics in, in food and uh, that is what we are mostly interested in, the physic physics aspect of, of, of cooking, actually. He was telling me that he was, you know, sometimes getting, you know, a little bit frustrated with the fact that he didn't have, you know, a proper either a proper lab or a proper kitchen where he could you know, explain things with his students or he could show them you know, a particular way that they would need to research uh, and find something out. So I then you know, started a, a dialogue with him, maybe sort of speaking you know, to some, some people like Electrolux to see if we could work jointly together and create a food science lab. We want to turn this lab into a facility where you can produce and reproduce foods with great accuracy because we have uh, equipment which are extremely accurate and precise and what we would like to do is to be able to do experiment on cooking processes and food that are reproducible and we understand why certain things happen from the physics point of view. So the lab really will work in a multiple of ways. Uh, one is you know, research and development. We are offering very interesting projects to undergraduate students uh, which are all food related, but all very strongly physics uh, content. I'm doing some different course papers and exam papers with, with the students. We have done quite a lot of work on bacterial, um, understanding how bacteria grow and die, and uh, what you can do in order not to promote bacterial growth in food. Yeah, we've done tests on, on a simple way of obviously cooking uh, chicken breasts in terms of retaining the, the most moisture over the course of you know, temperature control, sous veding, water bathing. Uh, we did uh, wobbliness of jellies. And another one we did, which every chef likes to know, is how do you get your, you know, your crispy crunch on a chip as well. What you try to do when you, you do crunchiness measurement is to try to mimic your, your chewing process. And so we built a machine that uh, measures displacement and force. So with all the produce that we are using in the, in the lab here, um, I needed to have someone you know, that is approachable uh, and I know is reliant and is consistent uh, in their produce and I've had a very good relationship with, with Wild Harvest. My relationship with Tom first came about when Tom was looking for some, some St George mushrooms. If I look at the, uh, the growth in molecular gastronomy categories for us has been phenomenal. And then with Tom's knowledge and culinary skills and Peter's knowledge, combining the two, I just had to be a part of it. For what Tom and Peter are going to be doing within the whole science and food, uh, clearly the, the knock-on effect of that is going to develop, hopefully develop, you know, new techniques uh, which will align for the products that we use. But also I think, you know, with a business like Wild Harvest playing a part within any education, it's, it's imperative when you're looking at you know, educating the next chef, the chef of tomorrow. So this project is, you know, is really, I think, in terms of what uh, a chef can obtain in terms of research and development. You know, it's, I think it's going to be second to none because you know, we have this unit uh, where I can come and I can cook, I can try things. We're at the very early stages of, uh, of this lab, but I think you know, in three, four years' time, uh, once it's been you know, operational and we've kind of knitted all the little pieces together, I think you know, be, we should come and have another conversation to see where we're at.